Hey, Smokey. You getting old, ain't you? Huh? Yeah, you getting old. Yeah. Today's the day. Did his head yanked off? Get the oil drained. Everything changed over. Get everything ready. I'm gonna CC these heads. We're gonna compare them to the other heads. Make them the same. We're gonna put the head back on there. So let's get these heads off. So that way we can CC and figure it out what we need to do. Okay, now we're getting the heads off the work truck. I figured it's about time for me to start working on this old thing. So I guess I'm gonna go ahead and pull the wiring harness off of it. Go ahead and get this old short block out that ain't no good and uh, pull the turbo kit off because we're gonna rebuild a turbo kit. I'm gonna build a new turbo kit for where all this stuff's rusted from sitting. No heat in it, so let's get this thing out. I'm also gonna go ahead and work on fishing this firewall, fishing it back because we're doing a different intercooler this year on it. So I'm gonna change out that fuel cell. I'm gonna here and sand the engine bay. We're gonna repaint the engine bay on it. This thing's looking rough right now, so. If we should do a lot of changes, I'll make it look a little bit cleaner, a little bit nicer. Boy, ain't playing no games. He said he got his cheater bar out. I was here talking to a freaking customer who came down here rocking and rolling, getting these heads off. I appreciate that, Gabe. I appreciate you working on your vehicle, bro. I appreciate that. <laughs> I am glad to see you here doing this. You get all the washers off the top and stuff? You mean keeping up with them? I meant that right there. All right, cool. Go through and uh, get all those nuts off and get the washers off and then put them, put them in the bag over there. And then we'll slide the headers back so you can do that. I get a pry bar. Watch, I'll show you how to do that. All right, Caden almost has this thing off. So I'm gonna go out here and help him get the last set of washers out of it. I gotta pull this one ground wire loose. Take that ground, take that. That's all we did was that right there, son. Uh, you can just hold it out here for a minute. Just set it over there to the side. Get your magnet ready. All right, there's that bolt out of the way. Now look, when I pick up on it, that's when you want to go through it. Let me get these back. Pull that. You're gonna have to pull those back if I lift up a little bit. Pull it this way, like that. All right, now get your magnet on them. Take your magnet and get all your mag get all your washers loose. You done got that one, didn't you? That one. I got the last one myself already. There you go. All right, let's get it on now. Get a pry bar for us. Come down here to Bob's today. That way we can go through and get both to CC this chamber to figure out what the CC is on it. And then I can go from there. I'm going to get him to cut the head on the other ones. And that way we got the same exact compression. That way we're only changing the intake volume and the exhaust volume of the ports and the port shape. The valves are a little bit smaller, so should unshroud the valves a little bit. So we're gonna try that real quick. We're gonna CC this out and see what it comes out to. I'll let y'all know here in just a minute. Right, what are you right now? It's on two. It's just on put two. Put that in there and turn the valve on. I remember you on two. You gotta go to, now you might see a bubble and you'll have to stop it, move the head a little bit to get the I bubble gotcha. in there. Hold the head level right there, son. So it wound up being 62 cc's is what these are at right now. So Kate, Damien's going to go bring the other one in here so I can measure it and see what it's at. So we can figure out what we need to cut them out to make it where we need to make it. So let's go ahead, we're gonna grease it up, put some more water in it, put it on the other head and then go from there.
Feature advertises 68. See as the air bubble gets out of it, we're gonna work, work that air bubble up to the hole here. That's where our heads are at, right there. Got over 74 cc's or 74 on this one, so that's a pretty good size difference. All right, guys. Well, it's it's Thursday, Cade's birthday, so happy birthday, Cade. Me and Damien just got out. We just put a headlight connector on a little Chevy Spark for a girl who works at McDonald's. And I was telling Damien, I said, Damien, you know, I said people that work at like McDonald's or people that work for the public that deal with a lot of traffic. I said, that's the people that really help your business. I said, because I said, you know, there's always cars out in the parking lot, cars won't crank, cars have issues. They come inside, borrow your phone, stuff overheats. So the lady, you know, I got, I got this mobile mechanic. He'll come out here and check out in the park. I said, people like that are really what helps your business grow and stay growing and, and, and have clientele. I said, because there's always somebody out there needing some kind of work i said and them people that work at like mcdonald's and places like that fast food place they're dealing with these people on a daily having conversations with them and they're going through and talking about life and everything else while they wait you know some people do not everybody but some people do or somebody breaks down in the park i got their hood popped they walk out there hey you know i know a mobile mechanic come out i said that's the people that really for what we do that's the kind of people you want to do work for us because they're the ones that help out and spread on. I mean, we want to do work for everybody, but I'm just saying people like that are very valuable to a business like mine that goes through and does mobile stuff because I fix stuff right. I fix it right the first time. That way we don't have to do it 10 times, 12 times, 20 times. I do what I say I'm going to do. So therefore, you know, if I come out and I fix your oil leak, and I say it's this, the more likely you ain't gonna have an oil leak right there. You might have another oil leak, but you ain't gonna have an oil leak in the same spot I done it in, unless it was a defective part, you know? So for me, I typically, I keep stuff to do. Uh, there's always something to do. But my job really is to work myself out of a job. That's, I mean, that's what my goal is, is to get everything done on people's stuff that needs to be done. And that way I don't have to touch that car no more and I move on to a different car. So I'm slowly working my way through all my jobs to the point where eventually I won't have no job. But ultimately I will always have jobs because stuff always breaks and people always need breaks. People always need tune-ups. People always need different kind of stuff done to their car because cars are never in a cycle. But my job personally is to do your job correctly, do your job right, do your job fast on time everything i want to i want you to have a reliable vehicle that you can go backwards forwards to work with i can sleep at night and don't have to stress over the job i done 10 minutes ago you know what i mean like i know like when i sleep at night that's why i stay looking like i do i stay looking young because i don't stress over stuff because i know when i put it together i'm not sitting at home going did i tighten up them bolts I do this. I do, I'm not playing on my phone. When a lot of times, like my phone goes in my pocket, unless that thing, unless my hands, 
unless I really, really want to, I don't answer the phone. I will not, like, if you call me, I will not answer the phone. If I feel a text, usually I'll pull a text out or something like that. But as far as answering my phone, I usually don't answer my phone. I check my phone when I leave, I call you back if you leave me a message. But I don't go through and, uh, I don't take my time, my attention away from what I'm working on to be playing in my phone. You know what I mean? Like, I need to know that I tighten that bolt up. I done this right. I done that right. I don't want to go through and be like sitting at home, and be like, "Hey, did you did you tighten them head bolts up? Did you do that?" You know, that's not how you run your business. And if you're in your phone constantly, you can't. It's easy to text and drive going on the road. And if you ever text and drive, you know that there's times you get home and you'll be like. How did I get home so fast? How did I get home? You didn't see nothing along the ride because you were so focused on your phone. You got there. You got there. Luckily, you got there. But at the end of it all, sometimes you sit back and be like, because I'm guilty of it. I've been there. I, I went down the road and been like, man, I'm already in Lincoln. I don't even remember nothing about the ride. So if you're doing that and you're working on a car or that'd be like your doctor at the hospital in there doing surgery on you. He's playing on freaking Facebook while he's doing open heart surgery in between rounds. You think he could do a job? He could do a job. You, would you want him doing your job like that? When he, him turn around playing in his phone while he's cutting you open and stuff like that? You wouldn't want that. Well, that's the same way about a car to me. A car, you know, you don't get these brake lines tight or you don't get them calipers tight. You're playing with somebody's life in one way or another you know so i try my damnedest not to be on my phone when i'm working on a car when i get done with it i'll check my phone i'll get on and i'll do that but during the process of working on it i'm not playing on my phone my music's playing and i'm i'm getting at it and i'm doing it that way i know everything i do is 100 percent legit and it's tight and it's right and we don't have to worry about it you know so just a piece of advice. Like I said, people like that, they work at McDonald's and stuff like that. I know some of y'all get mad at them. Y'all talk junk about them and all that stuff. I see it online. But some of them people right there could really help your business if you treat them right. We appreciate y'all. We love you. It is what it is. Happy birthday, Caden. We're going to get on down to this machine shop, get these heads CC'd real quick, the chamber CC'd, figure out what we need to do with the other ones so we can get the S10 back together the next couple of days. Ride with us. Me and Damien, here we are riding down the road in this little, look at this truck. It's called the Lobster Dog. So I got the cow off, but I come down here because they said it needed a fuel pump. Well, it ended up being the distributor was off. I'm sorry, my camera's dirty. But the timing was off on it, and he's having to hold on the Ford EV try keeping it running. So me and Damien, we're riding down the road right now, and he's going to dial this distributor up to make it spark off, and then we're going to pull the timing back out of it. That way we get an optimal timing for the weight of this vehicle. And then we'll lock that instrument out so you ain't got to worry about it coming loose again. So y'all ride with it. That was a simple and easy one. Come to find out, when I was walking back to the building, I realized my buddy Charlie, we used to do martial arts together a lot. His, uh, play, we used to train together. His place is right directly next door. I didn't know where his spot was in Denver, so I took a picture and sent it to him. But it was pretty cool. Like I said, he's got a sweet spot down there. That whole little avenue place, the uh, lobster dog, just the whole place has cool vibes to it. You know what I mean? Like, it just has a, a cool feeling to it. But I appreciate Colin, which is another guy that has a shop for sending me to work you know what I mean? he could have done it he could have done it if he wanted to do it but he sent it to me he does more fabrication anyway zen zen's fabrication zen's performance colin zen look him up on facebook zen brothers all whatever you want to call <laughs> colin but all i said colin zen look him up on facebook if you want anything fabricated or something he scratched my back i scratch his back he does really really good fabrication work he runs out of a little small shop him by himself gets his kids down there to turn around and do a little stuff here and there trying to teach them the ropes and teach them just like me so you can't hate on that so y'all check him out appreciate you